Hello, everybody. My name is Dominique Gibson. I'm back again um, on my YouTube channel. I know it's been a quite a while since I've done a video. Uh, last time I did a video, I was talking about um, all the reasons why I was saying no to traditional publishing. Um, and I said I was going to actually start working on videos for both sides of the equation. But so far, I haven't gotten a lot of information when it comes to the positive aspects of traditional publishing and who is actually successful at it and actually enjoys the process. Because some of the things that I have noticed lately when it comes to Facebook and Twitter basically is that they either they have a traditional book publishing deal that they are miserable in because of the fact that not everything in that traditional traditional publishing contract is all glitz and glamour. So uh, there's even authors who like been traditional pu traditionally published for a long time, and they go through a lot of a lot of ups and downs, a lot of issues. So I was trying to find a positive spin on reasons why I could possibly say yes to traditional publishing, but so far I haven't had like one extremely valid reason of why I should say yes to traditional publishing or even, well, basically it would, me would be a hybrid author doing traditionally published and self-publishing, but I don't know. We'll see. Um, I don't know if I introduced myself because I went on a stupid tangent and I didn't really get a chance to introduce myself. So hello everybody. My name is Dominique Gibson. I am the self-published author of a total of five books. Um two nonfiction books, which is called the Gibson Newsletter, a year in review, and three uh fiction novels that I would like to deem a sci-fi paranormal romance right now. There's a lot of I actually went through school where a lot of professors were like, no, it's futuristic sci-fi. And I was like, whatever. I don't think it's futuristic sci-fi, but whatever. Um, so uh, I am the author of Enormous Revenge, Enormous Fate, and Enormous Allegiance. You can check out the description box below if you want more information about that. Usually I'll entertain you with my showing of my books, but today... They're somewhere around here, and I'm not going to entertain you with the images of my books today. If you want to find out more about me and my work, you can check down on the links down below, my website, Amazon, Draft Digital, all that stuff. Check it out below. I still have not done Instagram yet, but I will probably do it between... I want to say, well, let's say between July and December. So basically, I'll probably do Ingram Spark for like the first two books this year. Um, unfortunately, the reason why I haven't been posting as many videos is because of the fact that I'm moving. I'm officially moving away from my current residence and I'll be moving back inland. I don't really like tell them my locations or whatever, but I'm officially moving out. So that means I have to move out a lot of stuff, do a lot of things. And it's been on my mind for like, ever since my landlord told me I had 30 days in order to lease this up June 30th. And I'm like, okay, I gotta pack up. I gotta go do all this stuff. So I've been um, doing that. Um, my hair is a mess, obviously, because of the fact that I work in a daycare setting and that's just the way that it is. Um, well, it's a little frizzy, who cares? I don't care. Um, so the video technically today is going to be about a book review of this book right here. Brenda Novak, When I Found You. I recently just read, finished this book like about I want to say three weeks ago. Um, this was this is one of the first Brenda Novak books I have read. Um, when I found you, 
And overall, I would give it a four out of five. Uh, I did not put post a review on Amazon yet, but I will. Um, and like other retailers, I probably do that too. Um, so if you're interested, this is the book that I'm going to be reviewing today. This video will be a spoiler alert. So if you have not read this book yet, if you haven't read it yet, and you don't want me to reveal what's inside the book, the details inside the book, just turn off the video right now. Just turn it off and go read the book first before you turn to the video, okay? But for people that already read it, you know, you're gonna be familiar with it. So, um, so I picked up this book while I was out and about shopping. Um, also like Walgreens has a little book section where they have like small set of books available. And this was one of the books that I actually picked up because I was interested in reading um, some more books outside of the romance genre, but come to find out this was a romance. So, which was pretty cool. So, um, first book that I've actually read by Brenda Novak. This was, this wasn't a bad book. I actually enjoyed it. I really did. Um, for a contemporary romance. Because um, this is what you call a single title contemporary book. Single title contemporary romance, I want to say. Um, and I don't know, they probably labeled it a women's fiction novel, but I don't know, in my opinion, it, it focused more on um, two people's journey of falling in love all over again and stuff like that. And second, it's reads to me like a second chance romance. Okay, this is my opinion. If anybody disagrees with me, great. Leave a comment down below. Just try to be kind and respectful, okay? Um, but anyway, so this book was basically about a woman named Natasha Gray, who moves from um, Los Angeles, California to this small town called Silver Springs. And I'm not exactly sure where the location is. Silver Spring, but it is Silver Springs. Um, it's a small seaside town. Um, and she moves there after her life ends up falling apart due to um, her failed relationship when it came to this other man she was dealing with and back in LA and her dream of becoming a, a dream of becoming a, um, a, a pediatrician, I think, doctor, whatever, along those lines. And she comes to Silver Springs in order to rebuild her life after her failed marriage relationship. And she brings along her son and they, she tries to rebuild her life back up with her son to a point where she's trying to start over after the horror that she's been going through. And in this book, you will actually meet the hero in this book, who is Mac Amos. So Mac Amos is, um, well, from the way that the book started out, Mac Amos is kind of like a friend of Natasha's, who's always there to help her out whenever she needs it. Um, but um, in the book, Natasha is like, you know what, I can do things myself. I don't need him to constantly come to my rescue. And um, I think like in the beginning of the book, she, um, she reveals that, you know, she's moving into Silver Springs into this house and within this house, it's all broken up. Windows are busted. It gives off a horrible smell. Um, cause when she didn't, I don't think she really took a look at the house or whatever. So it wasn't, it wasn't in uh, the best condition. So, uh, Mac comes out there, he sees the house, and then he decides that he wants to help out as much as he can. 
And Natasha pushes him away at first, saying, no, you know what, I got this, you know, I don't need your help, da, 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 da. But Mac is nice enough to loan her money and help her out when it comes to these type of things. Um, and she, Natasha tries her best in order to push away the hidden feelings that she has for Mac on the inside. And at first you're, you're wondering why she pushes Mac away. And then you get into her history of her ex-husband, I wanna say Ace, right? I think that's his name. And yeah, I do apologize. I'm not really too familiar when it comes to, well, I am somewhat familiar with the, some of the names, but um, like I said, it's been three weeks and I've been um, everywhere as well. So, um, so she rebuilds her life, tries to rebuild her life after her failed uh, marriage to Ace and her son decides that, so she decides that she divorces Ace and the reason why this book struck a chord with me was because the guy that she was married to that she's not separated from or whatever reminded me of my ex-boyfriend uh, a little bit of five years. So this book was actually a trigger moment. Like um, her, her Natasha's relationship with Ace was a trigger moment for me. Um, and I didn't really, um, it was really hard for me to, to, to read something like that after just recently going through something like that so but um it was it was kind of comforting to know that she had actually written a book about even though it was even, it's fiction obviously but she had written a book about somebody who was actually going through something similar when it came to um her relationship with ace so ace is what you call a man child and i had to deal with something similar whereas you know, they come in, they promise you the world, but then after a while, they don't promise you anything. They're all about themselves. They don't do much around the house. They don't take care of their responsibilities. They just, um, they just sit there and they whine and they cry and they mope and, you know, whatever. Um, it's what a man child acts like. And I think that's what Ace acted like in this book was that he was acting like a a, a man child. Okay, so um, she ends up. What was that? So she has an ex husband named Ace who was acting like a man child didn't want to take care of responsibilities when it came to his son Lucas. So eventually they end up being divorced and Natasha says that she never wants to feel that type of experience again in the beginning of the book. But then when you dive further in, you find out that um, Natasha and Mac have a history together um, when it comes to their relationship. And come to find out Natasha has a history not only with Mac, but with Mac's entire family because of her history when it comes to her family, especially when it comes to her mother. Um, this book was very intriguing because of the fact that we got to know not only Latasha's background a little bit when it came to how she survived and how the Amos brothers, well, the Amos family, I should say, came in in order to rescue her out of a very potentially dangerous situation when it came to her and her mother. Um, and she ends up back then while she was like in her early years, like 15 or 16, after the Amos family takes her in, she ends up falling in love with Mac beforehand. And unfortunately it doesn't work out the way that she wanted it to work out. So they end up separate parting ways and then in the midst of it she ends up having a whole nother life with Ace and ended up having a son which I think his name is Lucas. Like I said I'm not um hundred percent I've never been good with names so if um if 
um, the characters' names are wrong, feel free to correct me or whatever. Uh, that's fine. Um, but we go through a journey of where um, Natasha tries to rebuild her life without getting Mac involved, but unfortunately, um, Mac ends up getting involved anyway because of the fact that we eventually find out that, you know, he has feelings for Natasha. And there's a lot of twists and turns when it comes to this book. I'm not trying to reveal everything there is to reveal about the book, just in case there is somebody watching and just wanted to um, review it, review my video and my thoughts on it. So um, this is like a Harlequin novel. So uh, Mira, that part right there is part of the Harlequin books. Um, I put a link down below when it comes to the Harlequin books. Um, I don't know, uh, probably people should be familiar with Harlequin. Um, Harlequin is one of the biggest romance uh, book publishers in the world. I read a lot of their stuff because of the fact that I enjoy them. I enjoy them a lot. It was to a point where I did want to write for them at one point because I enjoyed reading their books so much. Um, so this story of Natasha and Mac was very, was quite interesting. This was a contemporary romance sort of thing. And I actually enjoyed it because of the fact that uh, I enjoyed the, the characters. At first it wasn't like I, you know, I had to get used to the characters. I liked Natasha, Natasha was pretty okay. I mean, she had a messy life when it came to her childhood and things like that, but um, she managed to push through with the help of the Amos family. And then Mac um, was one of the brothers that she actually fell in love with way back in the day before she ended up getting on uh, her own medical practice in LA and having a son and all that stuff. And Brenda does a really good job of going back in time with that particular history when it comes to them. Um, and then it goes back to like the present day where we find out that uh, Mac thinks that Lucas, Natasha's son is his because apparently some time ago before all of this happened they ended up sleeping together so in the midst of it he ends up actually getting a dna test to find out if he is um uh lucas's is his name of lucas no no i think his name is lucas right yes his name is lucas uh, to see if he's the father of Lucas, which is Natasha's son. Um, and it gets, the story gets even deeper when he finds out that he goes through a paternity dilemma of his own when it comes to his own family. So there's a lot of dynamics. It's a lot of factors when it comes to, um, not only Natasha and Max's complicated relationship, but um, the complication gets deeper when it comes to uh, Mac and his own family finding out about a particular paternity um, in the book. And it affects Mac to a point where he's like, oh my God, you know what? I have to do this. I have to figure out if Lucas, Natasha's son is really my son. And then we go into, it's another twist in the book that I thought was pretty cool, which I'm not going to reveal because I think I'm revealing too much already. And I think, well, this is supposed to be what you call a book review, but I don't want to reveal too much of it. But overall, the book was, was pretty decent, uh, pretty nice. I, I gave it, I'll give it four out of five only because of the fact that there was one part that in the book that I thought needed to be um, explained a little more. So apparently um, there was a, a issue when it came to 
the fraternity. Uh, somehow her ex-husband, Natasha's ex-husband, finds out about the fraternity and then he starts getting upset and getting emotional about it. And it gets to a point where um, they find the answers that they're looking for and Lucas gets to spend this this weekend with her ex-husband and um, the story was a little bit shaky from there because Natasha was going through something else at the time when it came to around that time that um, she dropped off Lucas with the ex-husband um, and I'm not going to kind of reveal that part because I think I'm just going to leave it for the readers to find out but Overall, this book is, is pretty interesting. Um, you will find out like throughout the book, their torrid relationship, uh, somewhat torrid, um, with Natasha, between Natasha and Mac, and why she's so reluctant to pursue a relationship with Mac and vice versa. Um, I don't want to reveal too much because I feel like I revealed enough already. So uh, if you're interested, I'll, I'll do a link down below. And overall, I did say my rating was four out of five just because of the fact that it was, um, it was just a few things that I felt as if she could have expanded on a little more when it came to Natasha and Ace and that whole Lucas and that whole visitation. Um thing in the book so but other than that it's pretty it was pretty decent uh it's pretty nice I kind of wanted I was hoping that maybe she would expand on the characters in the book because some of the characters that were in the book besides Mac and Natasha were pretty interesting too um, like I said, this is my first book, Brenda Novak, When I Found You. This is the first book I ever read from Brenda Novak, and it was pretty good. Um, will I ever read any of her other books in the future? Probably so. Um, with When it comes to me in particular, um, I have to literally read two or three books in a particular genre before I officially declare uh, an author, one of my favorite authors. Um, so right now I'm actually reading one of my favorite authors. Um, since I've finished this book, I said I really needed a break from contemporary romance and I've dived right into Lindsay Sands' Immortal Rising. So I'm reading this book now because, which is a stark contrast to this book right here. Um, like I said, this book was great. It was awesome. Um, I enjoyed reading it, but sometimes I just needed after like the all the heavy stuff, family trauma that she went through and, and Mac and all that stuff. I needed a break from contemporary romance for a little bit. So then I ended up getting this. Um, and I said I wanted to, to read a, a paranormal romance again after reading this. Because I want to escape for a little bit and get caught in somebody else's world. So I'm reading this now. Um, that's going to be my next book review. Um, oof, I thought maybe this was going to be longer than what I initially expected. But I guess not. And I guess that's actually a good thing. I don't think a book would be supposed to be no more than an hour. But that's just me. So what did I like about the book? Well, I like the relationship between Natasha and Matt. We got to saw a little bit of the, uh, Natasha's background when it came to her mother, because her mother does make an appearance in the book. And when she makes an appearance in the book, you'll figure out why Natasha is the way that she is when it comes to men in relationships because her mother has horrible time when it comes to men and relationships. And you'll, if you read the book, you'll actually figure that out like towards the end when 
it, it's, it's crazy. There's like a whole nother twist that I'm, I'm really trying my best not to reveal right now. Cause I, like I said, if there's somebody that's interested in reading the book, I say, you know, go out there and read it in order to figure it out what that twist is. But anyway, you got to experience what Natasha's went through as a child and how she ended up in uh, the Amos family because they took her in and everything else. And then you got to experience what Mac Amos has gone through when it comes to his family and why both of them kept fighting the urge to be together in the book. And it's for a pretty good reason. I mean, obviously Natasha was a little bit younger on the young side when she met Mac, so, and Mac was like the, the guy who was trying his absolute best in order to be respectful of Natasha um, at that age and at that time. So, um, I like the characters. I think I said that before. Natasha, ooh, excuse me. And I'm not, edit, I don't edit my videos, so, excuse me. I belched. Okay, big deal. Um, I like Natasha. Tasha's good. Mac is good. Like I, I love the main characters. Lucas was funny. Um, very funny boy. Very happy boy. Enlightened. A couple of times, whereas I did laugh um, when it came to the comments that he made and things like that in the book. And there were other characters in there. Natasha's mom. She's really something in this book like really something and um, you'll figure out why. She has a, a tragic past that almost ended up costing her her life. Um, she also has a history with the Amos family as well. Um, she dated one of the, the Amos brothers and you'll eventually find that out in the book and you'll find out what that type of relationship is like and there's like that whole other reason why Natasha and Mac shouldn't be together in the book, but they end up, you know, um, trying to figure it out along the way in the book. So what did I like? What didn't I like? I said that already. Did I have a favorite character in the book? Um, not really. I kind of liked all the characters. They all had their own different types of um, personalities and characteristics in the book that um, kept me reading. Um, the book was not like, sometimes with some contemporary romances, they come off as like really high and then sometimes they taper off and do some other stuff before they end up with the happily ever after. But um I felt like this this book kept me in, kept me entertained um, from beginning to end. So um, she did a great job when it came to this book. When I found you, um, I'll keep it as part of my collection of Harlequin books. Yay, Harlequin! Um, yeah, and I, I I guess that's it. I had this all planned out. I was gonna write it down as you can tell, but I decided I was just going to wing it today because today was a very hectic day and um, I wanted to get the video out of the way so that I'll be able to um, share some more videos with you in the near future. So um, that was my book review. I am still working on, other, so in other news, I'll just say that I'm still working on this book right here. Um, I was working on a little bit of it today in this notebook. Um, my hope is that I'll be done with the second draft really soon. Um, I'm still working on the second draft. What chapter am I on? Uh, let's see, let's see, let's see. I am on. 
uh, has to be on episode 13. Yes, here we go. Episode 13. But these are not going to really be episodes. They're going to be chapters. So, in the process of rewriting all that in between moving and some other issues that I got to deal with. Um, I don't know. I revealed on my website, if you click on the link down below, my last post was about me taking an insurance exam. So, yeah. So, I'm actually taking an insurance exam because um, I'm trying to find another source of income for my self-publishing business, basically. Um, the job that I have now is great, but um, I'm going to need some extra income coming in just in case. Um, well, I mean, it's, it's great to have extra income coming in anyway, but I really need to come up with more money when it comes to rewriting, revision, and all that stuff, and editors, and promoting a website, and all that stuff, so uh, I decided that I, in order for me to do that, I have to have another job besides the one that I have, so I'll be able to market it a little bit more, and see where it takes me, and editing, and all the glitz and glams of the self-publishing business. Um, and I guess that's basically about it. It's getting late, so I am going to do my nightly duties and go to bed. I have to get up and go to work tomorrow. Yay me. <laughs> but anyways, I guess I'm going to end this video here. I hope I did a good job when it comes to the book review. If not, oh well. I, I tried the best that I could when it came to the situation. I gave out my review. So that's my review for uh, this book, Brenda Novak, When I Found You. Like I said, if you're interested, I'll make sure to include the links down below. And if you like this video, love it, hate it, who cares? If you, I'm just kidding. If you loved it, Click a like. If you didn't, oh well, sorry to hear that. Um, if you want to continue to subscribe to my YouTube channel to do more of these videos, you can hit the subscribe button down below. Um, again, I'm going to end this video now. I'm getting sleepy, I'm getting tired, and if I continue this road, I will be able to not stop talking and then i'll be talking gibberish and you won't understand a word that i'm saying okay so this has been the video my name is dominique gibson um a book review of brenda novix when i found you uh, i'll be sure to post more videos like these in the future but for right now i'm going to end this video have a great night great day, great evening, wherever you are in the world, and I'll see you soon. All right? Bye.